Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. Welcome to a breakdown of Ochi's, now Hakuoho's, two tournaments in Jurio, and how it might give a hint of what we can expect from him in Nagoya. I'm going to touch on all 30 fights, so the commentary on a lot of them will be brief. I know some people would love an hour-long analysis of the kid, but not every fight has much to discuss, and there's no need to stretch it out. Also, I'm going to refer to him as Ochi, since that was his name during these Bashos, and it just makes more sense to me. Alright, let's dig in. First fight. Ochi goes low, Sukahara goes high. Suka pushes, but Ochi just brick walls him and drives forward. It's a pretty dominant win. I'm just going to say this now. Ochi is physically dominant in a lot of his Jurio fights, but if I say that's what he uses to win, it's not a denigration of his skills. Sticking to the skills you have and trusting your physical ability for the rest is a good approach for a young fighter. Trying to do too much can start a nasty spiral of forgetting where your strengths are. Alright, his second fight was a loss to Tama Shoho, but I'm going to save that for later so we can look at most of his losses as a group. So we'll go on to the third fight. Ochi's right hand goes for Takakento's shoulder, but Takakento immediately bats it away and gets both hands on Ochi's neck. Ochi's left is under Takakento's right arm, which is not really an advantageous position, but when Takakento gives him a face shove, he goes nowhere. Takakento darts in low, appears to get a good pushing position, but Ochi's left is still under his right arm, so Ochi can pop that arm away and leave Taka pushing with only his left. That's not going to be enough, so once the push loses steam, Ochi keeps dominating Taka's right arm with his left so he can get close and push him to get side position. Takakento spins to re-engage, but as hard as he pushes, Ochi just doesn't go anywhere and eventually shoves him out. Takakento repeatedly had pretty good positions, he just couldn't do anything with them. This is the kind of thing young competitors need to learn, how to keep lesser opponents from getting good positions against them. It's not at all uncommon across sports for gifted athletes to habitually let themselves get into bad positions, only to get punished when the opposition becomes good enough to take advantage. Breaking that habit early is critical. Ochi goes back to starting with his hands low. He locks in the inside left, but Tokusharyu just bulls him back to the rope. Ochi uses the rope to lurch forward and push Toku back, which is impressive against such a big boy. Once he gets Toku moving backwards, he brings his arms up to push, but Toku successfully parries his right arm while stepping left to keep him at bay. Ochi gets his right hand on the belt though, so Tokusharyu is using more energy to take the long route around the outside of the ring and still can't escape because of the grip. He basically runs until he can't. This is another win where Ochi was not in a favorable position, and the only thing that worked, his belt grip, was something Tokusharyu just couldn't do anything about. Ochi goes back to the right hand high on the Tachiai here. Tomokaze initially seems to have better hand position, but Ochi is just unmovable. This is a pretty dominant win. Ochi opens with a baby face slap, then gets his right on the belt, over Chura's left, which is also on the belt. Chura makes a pretty basic throw attempt, but Ochi defends it. Chura Naomi is just on defense after that, totally focused on preventing a double belt grip. Once Ochi pulls his hand free from that battle, it's high, so he twists to his right and pushes Chura's head to bait him into defending against a pulldown. The twist is the main thing, since it breaks Chura's belt grip. When Chura tries to get it back, Ochi banks his arms up to ensure he can't, and then he gets the push out. This one took longer, but when someone spends that much effort just defending your attacks, you're living rent free in their heads and the win is pretty straightforward. Ochi has got his hands low here. His left arm sticks to Tochi's arm, then his side as Tochi traps it. Tochi locks Ochi's arm in as he's being driven backwards, which, as many people have said about Tochi Musashi, is his go-to dick move. He offers no real defense against being pushed out, he just hurts Ochi's arm while losing. This is a dominant win despite Tochi being an asshole. Ochi comes in with right hand high and they end up in a very balanced position. Then Shimano Umi starts pushing him back, clamping hard on that now bandaged left arm. Veteran move. Ochi ends up almost to the rope, 
Then he switches stance and just kicks Shima's leg out to drop it. That's a crafty win. But Shimano Umi was really pressing his arm, and it's not clear where Ochi's offense would have come from if the kick failed. Here, Ochi basically lets himself get pushed back to the rope while trying to secure his right hand grip. Haki Yozan pushes and pushes, but only has his left arm around Ochi's back and his right clamped down, which doesn't stop Ochi from pushing off the rope and stepping left back towards the center of the ring. Haku Yozan gets a belt grip on the same side as Ochi. This leads them to maintain relatively neutral stances, sometimes shifting with Ochi's right foot in front or Haku Yozan's left forward. They get into a lengthy hand fight with Haku Yozan just trying to keep Ochi's other hand off his belt. Eventually, Ochi gives up on it and gets his arm under Haku Yozan's. Haku Yozan is looking for ways to get the left hand away rather than pressure it like Shimano Umi did. That might have been a good idea, but he doesn't do it. Then Ochi just love taps Haku Yozan's forward leg, off balancing him just enough to get around him and score the easy rear push out. That's a fairly dominant win. A guy in Ochi's position can't just rely on leg kicks, but as with Churin Umi, forcing Haku Yozan to do nothing but defend meant he really was never in trouble. After the Haku Yozan fight is where he lost three in a row, so let's bring in the Tamashoho match and look at all four of those. Ochi has got his hands low, but after initial contact, Tamashoho immediately reaches around his head and starts a pull. Once Ochi's head starts going down, he can't keep his hands planted under Tama's arms. All he can do is drive forward as Tama sidesteps along the rope. Sometimes this will work, which is why Ochi jumps and flattens out to lengthen the time before he touches down, but Tama stays in. Ochi gets an initial push, but Atami Fuji, who's only about an inch and a half taller, is able to reach over Ochi's arm and find a belt grip. That's hard to do when a guy has his arm jammed in your armpit. It also gives Ochi an easy belt grab on that side, but presumably Atami wasn't worried about that. Atami pushes Ochi to the rope, but once the momentum stops, he immediately tries throwing Ochi to the open side. That doesn't do much in and of itself, but it gives Atami a chance to lean down on Ochi's injured arm. He seems to have the slightly superior position here. After a relative pause, Ochi starts a push, releasing the belt to get both arms high and raise Atami's center of gravity. But his feet and balance don't keep up with the sidestep, and even though this isn't quite the same as his loss to Tama Shoho, we can already see that maintaining a more secure position while pushing is something he can work on. Ochi completely changes his game here. He tries a mini Hanka, but Ichi anticipates it and baps him in the face before diving directly into him. When Ichi doesn't chase him, Ochi comes right back in and drives. Once pushed back near the rope, Ichi clamps the arms and turns to again give himself more space to work with. Ochi gets the old hip wiggle going to break Ichi's left grip, pushing high, similar to what he tried against Itami, but Ichi is too high level and times his step back and push down perfectly. It's possible nothing Ochi did would have worked because we're seeing the difference between someone with high-end potential and someone with actual high-end skills, but he went completely off his normal game plan here, so it's impossible to say how things would have gone if he had just fought his normal style. Let's be honest though, he doesn't make this change without coach's approval, so I have to figure Hakuho's experience with Ichi told him Ochi's normal style stood little chance of working. Ochi starts with a little right hand slap, but he can't do much with it. Gano's plan is to keep Ochi off his belt, which he does without much issue. He lets Ochi put his head down and push in, gets a push on the head, steps, and escorts the boy out of the ring. I made a comment last year when Wakataka Kage started struggling after his Yu show about how he was trying to diesel forward and everyone started taking advantage of it. Gano Yama and Ichi no Joe might be higher level and able to beat him from other positions, but at this point the kid has four losses, and every one is from some variation of his balance not keeping up with his aggression. If you're familiar with other combat sports, you might know the idea of cutting off an opponent's escape and sticking them in a corner. The dohyo is round, yeah, but it's small enough that the same concept can apply, and at this point in the basho, it looks like the main thing for Ochi to work on improving. After those losses, he got a couple more wins. This turns into a belt fight right away. Sushi's got both hands locked in, whereas Ochi just has his right, but they're lashed together pretty tight. 
Sushi tries using his grip to drive forward, but that just lets Ochiai get his left on the belt, so now it's all Sash all the time. Sushi does his best, but Ochiai just absorbs the aggression and deposits him outside the ring. This is the win where he most shows his pure physical dominance, but I'm calling this a win despite the opponent's advantage because Sushi Minato was the one pressing the action and Ochiai would be in a lot more trouble against plenty of dudes in Makauchi playing the game the way he did here. Koto Kuzan tries to use Ganayama's plan, getting his hands up and driving Ochiai away from his belt. Ochiai has also been vulnerable to pulldowns and pushdowns, so Koto tries that too, but he doesn't set it up very well. He pushes Ochiai's head back, looking for the slingshot, but it's only for a moment and not nearly enough recoil is built up for the plan to work. Since he has to retreat for a pulldown, now he's near the rope and Ochiai can get in on the belt. Ochiai is in the favorable position, and when Koto Kuzan takes the pressure off Ochiai's ribs with his left arm so he can go to the belt, Ochiai reacts immediately, stepping and straight up pulling Koto Kuzan forward with one hand into a knockdown butt slap. This is pretty dominant, but Koto Kuzan could have caused more trouble with better timing. And now we got the final brawl against Asano Yama. Ochiai goes in with his chest, which means his hands are low and closer to the belt. He's going for his own style here much more than he did against Ichi no Joe, but Asano Yama knows full well the belt is what he wants and immediately defends against the hands. He has full control of Ochiai's arms while pushing, and here it looks doomed for the kid. But Asa gets a little sloppy, and Ochiai shows the kind of power he already has by pushing back off the rope. He also shows good footwork and awareness by not trying to drive Asano Yama straight back like a lot of guys would and instead he pivots to get Asano Yama to the rope as quickly as he can. Now it's Asano Yama who needs all his skills to get out of a predicament. His height advantage also does a lot of work here. Ochiai gets pulled up too far to maintain his pushing leverage, so once Asano Yama gets a knee under his leg, he only needs one arm to throw the kid off balance. But then Ochiai gets his left hand on the back of the belt, and Asano Yama's hopes for a big throw go poof. After arresting the center, Ochiai goes for the attack and legit gets Asano Yama off his feet to swing him around. Asano Yama puts as much force into shoving Ochiai from the side as he can, but he's in the unfavorable position here. He really just wins because he's able to get his foot firmly planted, and Ochiai's pivot foot comes off the ground. Ochiai fought extremely well after Asa's initial push, but it also looked like Asano Yama may have underestimated him the same way he underestimated Oho a few days earlier in the loss that cost him a playoff for the Yu Show. That's a 10 and 5 record, but breaking it down further, we're looking at 6 solid wins, 4 wins that might not have gone his way against stronger opposition, 4 losses due to lack of balance on the attack, and 1 loss where he acquitted himself well against someone who should be a far superior foe. That's a record which could foreshadow good things if he fixes the cause of most of the losses, or bad things if the opposition improves enough to take advantage of their good positions. In May, of course, Ochiai went 14-1 with a playoff loss, so clearly he landed on the good end of those possible outcomes. We'll talk about his Ganoyama matches at the end, but first let's go through his wins. First the quick dominant ones, then the rest. This is the rematch from Ochiai's second loss of the last tournament. He drives in with his chest like he did against Asano Yama, but Itami's not exactly the same level of competition. Ochiai immediately gets his arms up, raising Itami's center of gravity, and this time does a superb job controlling him out. Ochiai hits that chest first Tachiai again here. He gets pushed back a little, but he gets the belt with his right grip in the process. Dayamami pivots him away from the rope, which is a choice, and ends up defending that underhand left grip Ochiai keeps making his opponents fight against, even when he doesn't often land it. Once Ochiai gets Dayamami pushed back a little, he keeps driving, and again controls his opponent very well in getting him out. Here Ochiai's right hand starts up. Chio knows not to let Ochiai get on the belt and does a good job with his hand strikes, but at this point he's a broken mess. This is probably a good strategy for someone proficient at Oshi and also healthy, but Chio was never winning this fight. Ochiai leaves with the chest, gets his hands inside, and Chio can't do anything. This is just a quick, great example of control. Ochiai turns his head away from initial contact this time to the right, which might be to get the left hand in, but he's back to a right belt grip anyway. 
Shimizu Umi more or less willingly allows the left hand grip over top so he can slip his right arm in, but that's a mistake and it lets Ochi get full control. The end looks closer than it really is. Against Tamashoho, Ochi learned exactly what to do compared to last time. This isn't a surprise since we've seen it in all of this Basho's fights up to this point, but when Tamashoho fails to get his hands up fast or firmly enough to prevent the belt grab, Ochi executes perfectly. This is another fight where Ochi shows he does not mind getting into balanced positions because he can physically overpower most of his opponents. Like I said earlier, it's good to know your skills and trust your physicality when it should be superior. On the other hand though, it's questionable how long that's going to fly in Makauchi, although he should be able to make this work against the bottom of the division at least. Yeah, Ashoma wanted none of that. Now let's talk about the wins where there's a little more to discuss. Watch the first 20 seconds of this fight, remember how Chura was hell-bent on defending his belt in their March fight, and pay attention to how Chura contorts himself into ever-worsening positions overall here just to keep Ochi off his belt and maintain his own left-hand grip. Chura manages it for a while, but because Ochi is still able to advance his position into this nonsense, he ends up with a grip on the back of the belt and an outstanding position. He probably shouldn't even have bothered with the leg kick, or possibly gotten the belt first and then tried it. Ochi has to keep it honest, because he can give the whole thing away with one mistake, but Chura can't actively do anything from this position. Chura reverses his feet and tries to find a better balance point, getting at least partially untwisted in the process. But after a while, this hasn't effectively changed anything, so he switches back. At this point, he may just be doing it to switch which leg is bearing more of Ochi's weight so he doesn't fatigue as quickly. This is like doing the world's worst wall sets. Once he gets down super low, Ochi turns him, probably because he's too tired to resist, and once again Ochi does an excellent job of controlling his opponent to the rope and out. Just from what we've seen here, Ochi has mainly gone for right hand belt grips. On the main Sumo website though, Ochi is described as a Hidari Yotsu fighter, which means he prefers a left hand grip, and he very purposefully goes for that here. Problem is, Katana Waka gets both hands on his belt and just starts popping him back. Ochi shows a moment of power, swinging Katana Waka around like he did a Sanoyama, but this is mostly Katana Waka tactically in control. Ochi is able to dip his leg in an off-balance Kita, but it's hard to throw a guy who's got both hands locked into your belt. When he steps and drops his right side to swing Katana Waka all the way around, yeah, that's good footwork, but that's also a substantial power advantage. From there, he uses the left hand to control Kita all the way out, although this time he has to go out too. Ochi 100% should have been called for a false start here. Anyway, it ends up working to Takakento's advantage since he ends up lower and thus able to drive Ochi up and back. Seeing Ochi get pushed to the rope here makes it noteworthy how little has happened in this Basho compared to the last one. Once he gets off the rope, it turns into a type of fight we really haven't seen Ochi in. They're both working arm and upper body control, static, but with no one on the belt yet. Takakento wiggles his left hip in once, so when he does it again, Ochi is ready to go for the belt. This forces Takakento to swing it away to avoid the grip, which gets his balance just off where it needs to be to hold position. Ochi pushes him back, and Takakento fails to defend. To Ochi's credit, as physically overwhelming as he is, he's taken advantage of some small openings to pick up wins. Ochi looks like he's going to get another solid force out, but Hidden Oumi resists successfully. Not only that, once his left foot finds the rope, he uses the leverage to force Ochi off balance to his right. Hide's got such a dominant position now that all Ochi can do is willingly spin to try and recover, and he looks absolutely screwed. But look at this leg kick as Hidden Umi is about to finish the job. It happens so fast that without rewatching, it seems like Hidden Umi just slips, but Ochi actually recovered and defended against the push, however, barely. Meatball tries the whole pushing Ochi off the belt strategy and moves him back, but ends up settling for a standoff in the center. He at least has a belt grip while avoiding Ochi's. 
21 seconds later. Once he pushes Ochi back to the other rope, he sells out on the push, but Ochi is just too hard for him to move. Bushozan doesn't have a bad position in this fight, he just can't go power to power against Ochi like this. Ochi leads with his face here, which leaves both hands down to go for the belt. Shona no Umi appears very conscious of this. He clamps Ochi's left arm high and tight to keep it far from his belt and battles his other hand as well. And he gets the better of the initial fight. He's got a left hand grip, which Ochi has his arm on top of, and Ochi's left arm is just around Shona's back. When Ochi swings his right arm out though, Shonen Umi doesn't maintain the belt grip. He moves his hand to get further around Ochi's back. When he can't get hold of the belt back there, he tries to move his hand back to where it was, but Ochi's reach was just a distraction tap. When he swings left, Shonen Umi fails to regain the belt at all, which makes it easier for Ochi to drive his arm inside. This still doesn't land the belt grip for Ochi, but because Shona let go, now they're disconnected. They're in a pretty even, kinda sloppy fight, but when Shona goes for an awkward throw, Ochi gets his right hand on the back of the belt. Shona Naomi does his best, but when he can't break the grip on one last throw attempt, he just gives up. Maybe he felt his toes touch outside the rope, but it looks like he's still in and he gets big yeeted. If Shona Naomi ends up in a similar position when they fight next and remembers to keep hold of the belt, he might have a better chance. And now Ganayama. This is their regulation fight. Plenty of guys have shown awareness that they need to keep Ochi off the belt, and Ganayama did the same in March. Inexplicably though, here he opts into a close quarters belt fight. Not only that, he loses initially as Ochi gets a left hand grip in and he completely misses. Ochi is really getting after him, but Ganayama maintains his position long enough to get his right hand inside and lock it in underhand on the front of the belt. Ochi swings him around and gets a hand on the head, but that's not enough to do anything, so he works his right hand in and forces Ganayama to defend. Unfortunately, he goes for the right hand so hard that Ganayama manages to break his left grip. Ganayama uses an underhand grip to help get Ochi down, but once Ochi was off the belt, Gana was really in the position he needed. This was a flip of a lot of the fights we've watched here. Ochi had the better position against a physically superior foe, but couldn't take advantage. And now, in the playoff, we see Ganoyama will never let Ochi anywhere near his belt again. Expect their fights to look a lot like this, at least in terms of approach, until Ochi finds a way to defend it and get inside. So what can we take from all this? While Ochi mostly suffered from failures of overaggression and balance in his March losses, he fixed that problem for May and was just too much wrestler for everyone except Ganoyama. He was getting tactically beaten by Gitanawaka and should have lost to hitting Naomi, but that's still 12 very solid wins against a level of competition not that far below what he'll find at the bottom of Makauchi. There are enough veterans around him now that one or two might find a way to win, but if he doesn't blow everyone out in the first week, then he's less likely to be considered a contender and given more difficult matchups, so whether he starts on absolute fire or merely pretty well, he should have a clear path to 10 wins. He could get done like Hokuseiho, starting 8-1 and, and then having the competition ramp up too much for him to keep up, but it takes longer to get the best opponents from the bottom of the division, and I also think he'll be harder to solve than Hokuseiho was. Alright, that's our breakdown of how Ochi blew through Jirio. Hopefully we all have a better sense of what he can bring to the top division, but for now, I'm just going to sit back and imagine a fight between him and Takayasu. Tell us in the comments who you want to see Ochi fight, and I'll see you soon.